Whenever we see or play a dinosaur survival game, one of the aspects people pay most attention to is the roster. How many dinosaurs does the game have? What are they? Is my favorite dinosaur in the game? No. And that's a natural thing. Most of us play these games because of them. We are passionate for these prehistoric creatures, and knowing how diverse the roster is impacts both our perception of said game and our choices when we buy video games in this genre. Games like The Isle, Path of Titans, and Beast of Bermuda are specially dependent on their roster. The dinosaurs in these games are not only visual attraction, a spectacle, or a mere component of a feature. They are a crucial and fundamental part of the gameplay experience. Each dinosaur is a character, a character that provides the player with a specific and unique playstyle. They are also often perceived with certain stereotypes like one being the most aggressive or one being the most passive. Throughout its development, Legacy received a total of 32 dinosaurs, half of which weren't supported by the end of its death cycle. And Ivrima currently has 9, being a good portion of them newcomers to the game. Their plan is to bring back all dinosaurs from Legacy as well as adding new ones, although they are not that new since some of them already have models since 2016. In total, the final roster for the IL should look a bit like this. 59 dinosaurs, including flyers, AI dinosaurs, Titanoboa, and a croc. Keep in mind that not all of them are 100% confirmed. This is a strong guesstimate of the final roster. And as most of you are expecting, I'm here to tell you that this is a problem and why. I'm not even going to point out that making 60 unique creatures is mostly impractical for this genre. Or that we would have to wait years and years even if that was possible. Because those arguments are not the core issue here. Yes, they are problematic, but their impact is not immediate, nor as detrimental as what I'm going to talk about. Having a dinosaur collection this large presents us with a new problem. And that problem is power creep. Well, not necessarily power creep, but for you to understand what I mean, I need to explain what it is. Power creep is the concept that elements implemented into a game, like assets, features, or mechanics, grow in power over time if we compare it to the original components of said game. As a result, Previous mechanics or features become redundant, less effective or straight up useless. This concept can branch out into more niche forms of power creep, like feature creep when we talk about mechanics or features of a game exclusively, or spectacle creep when we talk about visual effects or even narrative slash plots in video games. The most clear example of power creep is in MMORPGs where items or even full gameplay elements are utterly overshadowed by some more recent updates and expansions. World of Warcraft, Warframe, Pokemon, Hearthstone, and many 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 mobile games are good examples of the different kinds of power creep across the gaming industry. And today, we are going to talk about roster creep. We see big rosters in many games. MOBAs, fighting games, hero shooters. All of them face the same dangers roster creep presents. The larger the number is, the higher the probability of certain characters being overshadowed by others, to underperform in comparison to the average, or to be simply outdated when we talk about games with many years of development under its belt. However, that issue has a direct correlation to the game's limitations. On a fantasy setting like League of Legends, characters are much more varied and the restrictions imposed by the theme of the game as well as its franchise, are much milder than the more realistic setting like Rainbow Six Siege, where despite having sci-fi elements, the theme is much more settled in reality and is much more restrictive with creating a character. This is a self-imposed limitation by the developers, and it's up to them to work around their restrictions in order to create a diverse cast of characters both visually and mechanically. A task that becomes harder and harder the larger the roster becomes. When it comes to the Isle, its theme is heavily based in reality. Even though the dinosaurs don't have an accurate appearance for the most part, both their behavior and mechanics simulate real life to an extent. This adds very strict limitations to both the creature's design and their playstyle, since they need to resemble the real life counterpart to a large degree. 
This can easily go off rails since dinosaurs in real life don't offer a large variety of gameplay options inside their species family. Sauropods in general did look very differently from each other, but if we transfer them to a video game one to one, they perform and function practically the same, with very minimal differences. So to make them more mechanically distinct, the developers were required to stretch the dinos' elements so they become viable. Things like making them faster than they should, being bigger or smaller, behave in a way they are not known for, or utilize their bodies in unnatural ways. But those elements can only be stretched so far until they break immersion. And that immersion is made of the devs' own restrictions and the people's expectations set, again, by the developers. Fortunately, dinosaurs as a clade are very diverse across their families, offering us with many unique playstyles that we can explore. All they need to do is choosing the right dinosaurs. Yeah, about that. Dinosaur selection is a very polarizing topic. Everyone has their favorite dino, and they want to see it in-game regardless of their viability. In addition, there are many fan favorites that are so popular to the point of people criticizing said game for not including it. You can guess which dinosaur I'm talking about. However, this pressure to implement well-known species can often disturb the game's balance and create, you guessed it, roster creep. Right now in Evrima that doesn't happen yet, but if we combine the total amount of dinosaurs planned, we can see the potential problems the isle can face. First example. Brachy, Bronto, Diplo and Kama. What do they have in common? They are all sauropods, they are all big, long-necked, very tanky and very slow. What do they not have in common? Eh... Eh... They do look significantly different, but besides that, none of them possess significant physical differences that enable the developers to diverse their playstyle. And you already saw this in Legacy. Kama was just a killable version of Pew, which is going to be replaced by Bracky. So if given the choice, it is very evident which one the community would choose to play. Plateau and Maggie do not fall into roster creep, because despite being also sauropods, their anatomy allows them to act and play in ways the previous species cannot. Plateau being a semi-bipedal proto-sauropod, and Maggie... Well, Maggie is a problem on its own. If you're interested in knowing more about it, you can check this video after this one. Another example is Diablo and Staraco. These are two medium-sized ceratopsians with very similar size, shape, and their only difference is their horns and frills, which while is aesthetically distinct, it is extremely difficult to differentiate taking into account the restrictions imposed by the developers. Pachyrhino and Protoceratops aren't here since the former has a very unique nasal horn that can fill a separate niche and the latter is so small that the size itself is significant enough to provide the players with a completely different playstyle. These problems don't only affect dinosaurs of the same family though. Rugops, Monolophosaurus, Carcantodontosaurus and even old dinos like Para can fall into roster creep if they are not fleshed out enough. You already saw this, again, in Legacy, where Para is so overshadowed by every single Meteor and Apex tier that they are rarely seen. Of course, balancing and hitbox issues contributed a lot to this issue, but if something so simple as stat changes can turn the dinosaur utterly unviable, that says a lot about how the dinosaur was implemented. Afterthought needs to be careful when designing their dinosaurs, otherwise Rogops, Mono and Karka will suffer the same fate as Paras on their respective tiers. And the last thing we want is more wasted time in unviable characters. And the community at large is already noticing this issue. Therefore, now is the time for us to give our feedback and prevent such mistakes from happening. Because once the dinosaurs are already released, it's already too late. But how can we really solve this? To start, we need to detect which specific characters might succumb to this issue in the first place. In theory, all of them can. But for simplicity's sake, let's focus on the most obvious ones. I'm going to separate them into groups so it's easier to understand. So we have Bronto, Diplo and Kama, Dibble and Styraco, Karka and Giga, Cory and Para, Old Yuta, New Yuta and Mono. The first two groups were already mentioned, so I'm not going to waste time there. Karka and Giga is pretty straightforward. They are both apex carnivores, same size, same structure, same teeth, 
They are so similar in fact that they are direct cousins in real life. And the devs know it, since they mention Karka several times as just an African Giga, and promoting the idea that he won't come into the game. So at least there's that. Corey and Para share an even more evident case, with both being large basic adrosaurs with unique crests at the top of their heads. Corey might have a very difficult time fitting into a specific niche, since Paras are so similar, and unlike Corey's, Perry's crest actually can have a functional, mechanical purpose. And lastly, we have Old Yuta, New Yuta, and Mono. Yes, New and Old Yuta, because the devs decided to just make another one for some reason. So there will be an accurate Yuta and the current Yuta, but mechanically they would be literally the same animal, unless they either heavily modify the current Yuta or they heavily limit the new one, with the latter being already a recipe for disaster. And adding soul to injury, we have Mono, which despite being significantly unique, it is a dinosaur trying to fit into a very saturated category, the small tier carnivore. Venomous? Mm, no, we already have one. Semi-aquatic? No, we already have one for that too. Bleeder? Uh, already sorted. Scavenger? No, not that one either. My best guess is that it would fill the small tier fracture carnivore niche, basically a carnivorous pecky. But risking sharing any other niche mentioned previously will place them in direct competition with the other dinosaurs. And when that happens, there's always a favorite. So here we have our candidates. Bronto, Diplo, Stareco, Karka, Cory, Yutas, and Mono. As much as I'm against this approach, Dinosaurs like Karka, Cory, and Styraco have no place in the game, since their niches are already filled and due to the game's limitations they cannot change enough to fill a separate playstyle. Styraco can be argued that it can, but I would remove it entirely personally. Same with Bronto and Diplo. We already have Kama as a middle sauropod. Having two more, with hardly any physical differences, would cause two out of the three to be qualified inferior or unviable eventually. Mono is heavily limited due to the oversaturation in its category, but it's the one with the least chances of causing roster creep in this scenario. And the two Yutas? Why? Just, just why, man? It makes no sense. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and keeping it running. If you want to join the ranks, the link will be in the description. Join our Discord server for memes and paleo nerd stuff, and I hope to see you on my next video. Stay safe.